Hey guys, my name is Shai and this is the reading for the week of June 5th. And honestly, I feel a little bit like repeating myself the message from last week. Not that I particularly remember one week ago, <laughs> but I vaguely remember that the reading was about like space and silence and stillness and kind of being in that liminal space. It's it's liminal space. It's liminal space time is what it is. And I'm really, really feeling that. I have been... So part of it is Mercury uh, retrograded back into Taurus and then stationed and then turned around. Mercury is moving forward now. So the energy is starting to shift. But Mercury is still in Taurus for like another week or so. Um, finishing that up and Mercury is having another trine to Pluto at the end of the week on Friday. That's, that'll be like the third and final trine of this go around. Um, so it, it is starting to shift, but we're still kind of... Um, sitting sitting in the silence and sitting in the stillness right from from the mercury and taurus and the mercury turnaround thing going on and i actually like for me it's been playing out i i've been doing a ton of like behind the scenes kind of work on different projects you know kind of related to this type of stuff right um and i sat down to make a video twice this week week and I couldn't get it off the ground like I couldn't speak <laughs> like I couldn't speak at all I'm pretty used to tripping over my tongue right but this was like really bad <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't get anything out nothing was like being communicated properly so I just kind of threw in the towel and was like okay this is this is a week for silence and stillness spent a lot of time just sitting around in, in stillness and yeah this is totally a repeat message from last week isn't it about this silence and stillness in this liminal space can feel like disconnection, loneliness, deprivation, and lack to, to, to some people. Um, but the, the, so the challenge is to learn to enjoy it for what it is. Learn to enjoy it for what it is. How can you enjoy the silence and the stillness, right? How, what are you meant to get out of this liminal space, right? The liminal space. Um, things are, are going to get shaken up. At the end of the week also because on saturday venus conjuncts uranus in taurus which is basically su surprise <laughs> surprise who knows who knows what'll happen right surprises in love surprises in money surprises in your physical world um yeah so just just know that there, there, there's going to be the, that electric shock happening basically over the weekend, right? Venus transiting uranus you'll feel that for a few days so if you're feeling this kind of um if, it, if the energy at the beginning of the week feels kind of lackluster to you, just hang in there. Things are going to get strange and surprising towards the end of the week. And then after the weekend and next week, we're going to be rocketing towards the um, Sagittarius full moon, full moon. So really, this is another invitation to just really, really enjoy, really enjoy as much as possible these remaining few days of recuperation, recovery, liminal space is the only word i can is that that's the term of the day guys liminal space because think about it it's going to be the sagittarius full moon and then we're going to be already heading into another solstice if you can even believe it so yeah this is this is a time for just inner work and getting reacquainted with yourself and just sitting in the silence of your own mind to perceive whatever appears in front of you. And I, I didn't even really, I like, man, I, I hadn't even looked at the cards yet because a lot of time when I'm reading, uh, doing readings, I'm staring off into space. Like my eyes are open, but I'm often like looking out the window off to the, off to the side. My window's over there, or I'm looking at my bookcase over there, or I'm looking up at the ceiling. Um, I'm not often actually looking at the table. I'm not uh, actually... I don't often look at what I'm doing in life in general. That's like a, a disconnect I have with my mind and body. I'm not looking at what I'm doing. So I didn't even look at this card, but I was talking about exploring your inner space, right? And this is <laughs> internal explorer. So yes, 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 exactly that. This is the week for exploring the inner realms because things will be... Ugh, there's like a reason for it. There's a reason for it. There's something for you to s discover within yourself and some like this time is a gift This time is a gift and the trick is can you find the gift, right? Can you understand how this period of your life no matter how you're feeling no matter how you're vibing no matter what is going on around you This period of time is a gift and the challenge is 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 yours to discover what the gift is right and to really just learn to enjoy it for what it is that that's what this is enjoy it for what it is enjoy it for what it is it's like imagine you go to you go to a club and maybe you don't typically go clubbing um but you know 
your friends are dancing, you know, and, and it's like you could, if you go to a club and you don't like the environment, you don't like the music that's playing, you could either like sit in the corner and kind of just wait until you can leave, or, you know, you can knock back a couple of drinks, hit the dance floor and just let loose anyway, right? <laughs> if you find yourself in a situation like that, it's like make the best of it. Find a way to just enjoy whatever there is to enjoy. Even if you don't like the music, just dance to it anyway, right? Find a way to dance to the music, even if you don't particularly like the music. Just find a way to let your body move move to the music in whatever way you can, right? So whatever is going on this week, it's find find a way to just enjoy it for what it is anyway, even if you don't particularly like it. <laughs> so I think, <laughs> I mean, what, what else can I say, right? The stillness card came out. <laughs> so this might be in, like learning to enjoy the stillness, stillness and the silence and the disconnection just to just enjoy it for what it is, right? And because like, you, you can think about it as disconnection, you can think about it as feeling, I feel weird, I feel disconnected, I feel discombobulated, I feel confused, or you can just say, wow, I just feel still, and that is so good. I just feel silent, and that is so good, right? Enjoy whatever you have to enjoy that is right in front of you. Um, two cards apparently here. <laughs> the world and cornucopia. This I feel is what we are heading into, right? This is the, I don't want to call it the calm before the storm because that's not exactly it. This is like the calm before the party, right? The silence before the party. It, I remember being a kid, you know, way like getting so excited to have my birthday sleepover parties. Um, and I, so before the girls started showing up, right, I would sit there in this white chair that was in my parents' living room that was by the front door. And if, I would sit in that chair because then I could see when my friends pulled into the driveway, right? And I would just sit there and it would be so silent and so still. And I would be so excited and I'd be all nervous waiting for my friends to come over, right? <laughs> you know, because I'd be like eight or nine or whatever. And just so excited to like, you know, be able to have, to be able to have a sleepover when you're a kid, right, is so exciting. And I would just sit there in the silence and the stillness, and it's the silence and the stillness before the party is kind of what we're feeling right now, right? And the party, what is coming, what is coming, the world. <laughs> I actually drew the world card for myself yesterday. That, it, it's like an interesting manifestation of the world energy right now. The world card is that completion of a cycle, but it is this like inner completion, this inner completion of a cycle. And um, yeah, I'm being reminded in my head here of, you know, things, everything needs to exist as a thought before it can exist as a visual and everything needs to exist as a visual before it can materialize into physical reality. So this like inner contemplation or this inner integration is happening right now because you're like, integrating, 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 integrating on like infinite levels, infinite levels. Um, everything that you have been thinking, everything that you have been dreaming up, it, it's like all of the thoughts are coalescing, right? All of the thought forms are coalescing. And this is di directly related to the Gemini Sagittarius axis, right? We're in Gemini season. And I guess we're actually already like starting to point towards Sagittarius because Gemini is like the scattering, right? The scattering of all of the different thoughts, the generation of thoughts in, a, in an immediate, in an immediate imminent kind of way and then Sagittarius pulls them all together, unifies them in this unifying point and alchemizes them and makes them one, right? Sagittarius being one alchemizing point and Gemini being like the, the scattering of the generation of thoughts. <laughs> so that's essentially what you've been doing, right? You have all of these thought forms that you're generating in your mind and you're, you're working on like integrating them in your inner space, right? You have a cornucopia, you know, the cornucopia, if, if you're not familiar with the symbolism of the cornucopia it's you know um just basically a bunch of fruit <laughs> you know it's a bunch of fruit which in antiquity represented you know like complete abundance and having like a buffet right it's it's what you might call a buffet a buffet having a buffet of all of your choices in front of you so that's what you're integrating all of these things you've been imagining and thinking and dreaming and they're, they're first, they're coalescing, right? They're coalescing in the void of your own consciousness. The thought forms that you have been generating are coalescing in the void of your own consciousness. And that is coming into completion or into fruition or into manifestation around the Sagittarius full moon. And then that's even going to be rocketing us into the 
solstice, which I haven't really started thinking about yet, but that's like, we're leapfrogging ahead, right? Through these um, like peak points of energy. And right now it's kind of in a lull of energy, right? The beginning of this week, especially is this lull point of energy, but it's not like a, it's not really a low energy state at all. Like sometimes, you know, you can feel like high energy, low energy, and high energy, low energy. But right now it's that the energy is internal, the internal, right? Instead of all this external energy, the energy is internal. Um, man, especially for me, right? <laughs> especially for me, like, like uh, blah, 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 blah. me because my, the sun is in my eighth house right now, <laughs> right? So when you have eighth house transits, everything gets really internal and you kind of want to hide from the external world and things get really uh, spiritual. So this is kind of being compounded for me. And for anybody who, who's having any kind of eighth house transit or a transit to the very bottom of your chart, like through the, the IC, the nadir, right? The bottom, um, the third house and the fourth house, that kind of thing, and 12th house transits, stuff like that, right? Um, if you happen to be having like fifth house transits or 10th house transits, right, you could be feeling this more, expressing this, like experiencing this in the concrete outer world. But if you happen to be resonating with my videos, right, whatever I'm feeling, it doesn't really matter what is influencing me. If you resonate with the video, then that's that's what you're resonating with, right? If you're resonating with the message, then you're resonating with the message. So I'm feeling this largely as this integration of thought forms that are soon going to be born, right? Integration of thought forms that are soon going to be born, being born out of the stillness, being born out of the stillness. Oops. And I'm wrecking everything over here. I think I want to keep this video pretty short, but I want to get some tarot cards. Saturn is also retrograde. Man, I have been trying to make a pick a card reading on the Saturn retrograde, but it just hasn't like... I haven't been able to do it. It's it's strange. It's all of this liminal inner energy. It's like getting hard to like materialize. So I, and I'm sharing that because if you are trying to materialize something, this is like not the week to be trying to materialize something like that's coming. It's going to come, it's going to like burst out of you, right? Anything you're trying to manifest or materialize or accomplish or achieve, don't push it, right? Do not push it. That is not the way, like that's not how it's going to work out right now, right? This is, this is like, if this is the week for you to manifest or materialize something, it's going to just be like pulled out of you. It's like, you'll, you'll just have this like feeling come over you. If you, know, imagine you're trying to write a book. <laughs> if you try to force yourself to write the book, it will never happen. But if it's going to happen this week, you'll just like find yourself sitting down and you'll, it'll just like pour out of you. Right. So that's, it's this really, um, this feeling of creative creativity being pulled out of you, being pulled out of you. That's how things are going to flow. If it's going to flow. Yeah, okay, so nine of swords. So I'm meant to address people's anxieties and fears about what's going on right now, right? Nine of swords, anxieties and fears. What else? Nine of swords, six of pentacles, two of pentacles. So the antidote to your fear and anxiety is, I mean, you got two cards of this balance and the magician, right? Two cards of balance and the magician. What are you afraid of right now? What is there to be afraid of right now? Uh, they're showing me like a rope, like a rope. Someone's feeling like they're at the end of the rope. <laughs> Someone's, so someone feels like they're at the end of the rope. Maybe, maybe, maybe several someone's, right? So this is a specific message for people who are feeling like they're at the end of the rope or feeling like they're at the bottom of the dark pit, right? If you're at the bottom of the black pit of despair or are you feeling like you're at the end of the rope? <sighs> this is the time where you find your balance. I know it doesn't seem that way. I know it doesn't seem that way, but sometimes in that strange human way, sometimes humans need to feel like they're hitting rock bottom in order to bounce back, right? In order to bounce back up. Because if you're at the end of the rope or you're at the bottom of the pit, it's because there's something you need to surrender and you just haven't been able to surrender it for whatever reason. And that's okay. It's okay that you couldn't surrender it until now. But that is why your soul takes you to the end of the rope or to the bottom of the pit 
or to the edge of the knife. That's why your soul takes you there, so that you will finally be able to surrender whatever it is that you need to surrender. And it's like surrendering, surrendering ideas of having to achieve. It's surrendering ideas of having to do more. It is surrendering the idea of having to do anything, right? It, it's surrendering the, <laughs> the human paradigm. It, it's like, I'm seeing someone just like, bending their head over and like emptying their mind, right? So much about, okay, so the thing that's not working, what are you trying to do and it's not working? If you've been trying to do something and it's just not working, not working, not working, not working, not working, and no matter how often you ask, you just keep getting the message to surrender, and no, no matter what you do, it's just never enough, and no matter how hard you work, it just never works, that's, that there's a mindset, it's gonna be different for everybody what the mindset is, right? Or like what the thing is that you're trying to do. The thing that you're trying to do that isn't working, that in and of itself is the message. What isn't working? It's not working because it's not gonna work. It's not working because it's not gonna work. So you need to surrender the way that you've been operating. Whatever you've been doing is not gonna work and it's not working because it's not going to work. It, it, you're, you're hit, like now I'm seeing like someone like hitting a brick wall, right? You feel like this, like hitting the, hitting the wall over and over and over again. You're not gonna get through the wall by throwing yourself against it over and over and over again. And you, you can probably hear Saturn's influence here. Um, Saturn and Mercury right now are squared. They actually had a turnaround thing when Mercury was stationing direct and Saturn was stationing retrograde, right? And Saturn retrograde just started. So they did this weird turnaround thing where they were square and it was really kind of tense. So Saturn is hammering home these lessons about releasing something from your mind, right? Releasing a mindset, releasing a mindset, releasing a way of you've been, the, releasing the way you've been operating. So that's why um, I suddenly find myself, uh, you, you, if you rewind this video, you can probably pinpoint the moment where Saturn's influence came in, right? Because I, I, I start getting like, <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> like more forceful in my speech, right? Especially c contrasting to how I was at the beginning of the video. This is the Saturnian influence. And this is Saturn coming through to teach you, to help you surrender this. Saturn like desperately, uh, desperately wants you to surrender this because you will feel so much better when you surrender it and you will not be able to move forward until you surrender this thing, right? How there is something about the way you have been operating in your life and there are these like deep subconscious programming, right? Thinking that, you need to work harder. Thinking that working harder will get you what you want. Thinking that if you just finally do enough, you'll get what you want. Thinking that if you finally just push yourself one more time, or if you finally like surmount one more obstacle, it's like this feeling of just like, if you just like, you're still, you're still trying, you're still trying, <laughs> you're still trying to do more and you're still trying to work harder. That can be playing out in many, many different ways, but that is the mindset that needs to be surrendered here. That is the mindset that needs to be surrendered. It's like there's some weird thing stuck in your subconscious that is making you loop this idea that working harder will get you what you want. Working harder will not get you what you want. This is an idea left over from the dissension cycle, right? You had to work hard in order to descend, right? Dissension was, was really, fucking hard, okay? In order to get your consciousness down here, you had to descend into extreme density and darkness and it was extremely difficult and you had to try and you had to work and you had to sacrifice and you had to twist yourself into things that you're not. You had to sh you had to shatter your consciousness. You had to push and squeeze and work to get down here, okay? So this is that's why you still have this programming and that's why it's okay that you have this programming and that's why you shouldn't beat yourself up <laughs> about this because it's a leftover of how you got here, right? And it was important for you to get here. You came here for all kinds of reasons or whatever, and now you're here and now you are now you need to ascend, right? And now you need to ascend. You're at the bottom of the rope, you're at the bottom of the barrel, you're at the bottom of the bottle, you're at the bottom of the pit. You can't come back up, right? You can't spiral up. You can't walk the spiral path of your own ascension with the, with the programming from the descension cycle. So specifically right now, this week, it's letting go of those ideas of working harder, doing more, trying to become something you're not. It's like, no, all of that needs to drop away. And it's the Saturn retrograde. <laughs> the Saturn retrograde is going to help you surrender that because <laughs> it's like you'll, you'll, you know, how many times can you hit the wall before you finally surrender it? 
that that's why you keep hitting the wall because like your soul knows that eventually you'll just it can feel like giving up right it can feel like hitting rock bottom but that's the moment of surrender right that's the moment of surrender and remember this is coming back to the original message right you can experience this as you can experience this as a shadow experience or as a light experience it's up to you how you want to experience this you can experience this like hitting rock bottom or like and giving up or you can experience it as oh my god it feels so good to surrender this and let it go oh my god it feels so good to finally let this go oh my god it feels so good to let this go right <sighs> and then you can start laughing and smiling and you can rise right those are those are two different experience two different ways of experiencing this same moment in your life two different ways of experiencing <sighs> the end of the rope, right? It's up to you how you experience it. You can make it as hard as you want or you can make it as much of a relief as you want. <sighs> yes, that. So either way, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you, if you experience it as giving up and hitting rock bottom or if you experience it as surrendering and letting go <sighs> and relief, right? As relief now you can just be yourself. Now you can just be who you are. Now you can just be your own soul. Now you can just be your own point of awareness floating in the void, right? What a relief. What a relief. What a relief. <sighs> right? <laughs> it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter which way you go. It doesn't matter how hard you make this on yourself because you're going to get through it. How do I know you're going to get through it? Because I've been there. I've been there so many times. I've been to the bottom of the black pit of despair. I've been to the end of the rope. I've been to the bottom of the bottle, <laughs> all of the bottles, okay? I, I've, I have so been there, I've been there so many times and every single time, it doesn't matter how many times I hit rock bottom, you rise like the phoenix, you rise, you rise, you rise. And one day, one day you rise and one day you rise and you realize you're never going back into that pit, right? One day you get out of the pit and it's for good. One day you get out of the pit and the pit seals up. You fill it full of dirt, you never go back in the pit. One day that happens and it doesn't matter when it happens because you just keep pulling yourself out of the pit right you just you just that's just how you are that is what you do you are a you are a a soul you are a consciousness you are a shining ball of light in the universe you can't help it right to some extent you get to choose how hard this is on yourself but at the end of the day your soul will spiral it, it's light your 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 soul is light and light spirals back to the source of light so that's that's what happens that's what you do that's how this works <laughs> so i know i know i know i know that you you get yourself out of this i know you do i know you do that's how it works i've been there i've been there so many times i can't even begin to describe okay <laughs> so i know you get out of it i know you do i know i know i know and maybe that was the, the point of this video. Maybe I'm just <clears throat> meant to, here to hold space for one or two people this week, for the one or two people who are, at the, who are at the end of the rope or at the bottom of the pit. And so, and I am here transmitting my codes because I have been there, right? I have already done this. I have been to the end of the rope. I have been to the bottom of the bottle. I have been to the bottom of the pit and I have risen like the Phoenix out of it and I don't know I don't I no longer go back into the pit that doesn't happen for me anymore I, I closed up the pit I sealed up the pit I don't go into it anymore there is no more pit right there is no more pit there is no more pit to descend into there is only floating up in golden spirals into the clouds and into the light that is all we do now that is all we do now and in this video you know I'm transmitting my codes of the, the path I have already walked so that if you are open to it, you can even say yes. If you would like to receive my light codes that are relevant on this, right? If you want to receive my relevant light codes, just say yes, just say yes. And they'll be transmitted. They'll be installed into your light body. I mean, you don't need my light codes. You don't need them. You can get them yourself. You don't need to get them from me, but I'm offering them. That's what I do in every single video, even when I don't talk about it, right? I'm, but I, in every video, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm offering light codes and I'm transmitting energy. And, you know, that's like, I do that just because it's like a helping hand, right? It's a helping hand, like the Six of Pentacles, a helping hand. It's just a little bit of assistance. It's a little bit of a shortcut. You know, I, I received different types of assistance and different types of helping hands and different types of shortcuts when I was climbing up out of the pit. 
and now I can pass them on to anybody who wants them. And then one day you can pass them on to somebody else who wants them. And that's how we do. That's how we go, right? We're all rising up in the spiral together because we are all holding hands. We are all, we're literally holding hands right above our bodies. We're all energetically holding hands. We're all right next to each other. We're all right next to each other, right? If you look at someone like me, even, <laughs> it's weird to put myself on a pedestal like that or weird to put myself out there like that. But if you look at me and go, I don't know how she got out of the pit. I don't know how, I don't know how she did that, right? I don't know how she stays out of the pit. I'm right next to you. I'm literally right next to you. You don't, you don't have to look at me and go, she's so like up there. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm like right next to you. We're holding hands. We're literally holding hands. Like energetically, we're right next to each other. We're right side by side, right? We're right. We're, 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 we're siblings. We're soul siblings sitting right next to each other, right side by side. So this is all, we're all spiraling up together. No one gets left behind if they don't want to be, right? No one left behind if they don't want to be. If you want to come, if you want to spiral on up with everyone else, then you spiral on up. All you got to say is that you're spiraling on up with everyone else who wants to spiral on up. <sighs> Provision. Here is your portal, right? Just got to open the door. Got to open the door. If it feels like your black pit has a, has a trap door on top, you just got to open the door. Hidden within your soul are the tiny thought seeds that, given the right care, can sprout into newly found abundance. You will find that all your daily needs are met as you listen to your heart's whispers. Even small dreams you haven't yet anticipated can become real as an everyday experience of beauty. Let stressful thoughts fall away. Trust the ways of your soul to bring you what you seek. Okay, guys. I'm sending you so much love and light. I will talk to you when I talk to you. Bye.